Hey guys, it's Saru, and I apologize for taking so long to release this video, but so many amazing things have been popping off at once in my life that I just haven't had enough time to edit this video or really release any content on a regular basis. In fact, with this video, I've had four different versions because my laurel was changing, or because I was changing up my setup on my skills bar, or whatever the case, or I had a different team, or it was just more easier with one team, or it was a cleaner team. I don't know, there was just so many things, so I just haven't had enough time. I just bit the bullet yesterday, I got my champion Laurel and unfortunately I lost it today because I have to do Broken Prison now, but anyways, that's beside the point, that's beside the point. New guide coming soon, maybe. And I got my team together and we just did it really quick and I just got new footage and I thought, hey, let's just use this, I guess, why not? Anyways, you guys should see some of those amazing things that I've been mentioning that have been really, really cool in my life and really fancy cool things that are coming really soon. But let's start it off with Arcane 9 Hard Mode. So Venturin, I assume you guys have done normal mode or seen my video, yes? <laughs> okay. Okay, so there are a few differences with this boss, but everything is essentially the same concept and attack patterns. So to start off hard mode has a mechanic called temperature rising. Activating ventilator. Now with this mechanic, basically the ventilation system will activate and just blow everybody out of their minds, but if you're a Lancer, you can use Rally Cry to prevent being knocked down. And if you're a Brawler, you can just Bull Rush. Now alternatively, however, if you are a priest or you have a priest in your team, you can use Kai's shield to shield the whole group, which will basically negate the knockback effect from this mechanic. The second thing is time bombs. Now in normal mode, I already mentioned that you have two bombs that will spawn in normal mode and basically that's basically all it is every so often it'll just spawn now in hard mode it'll spawn two or three depending if you're above or below 50 percent hp on the boss so if you fail to break them they will hurt you a lot so if three blow up you probably wipe the whole party but they are ranged so you can kind of escape them but the one thing that makes me upset is that you can't just jump off the building to avoid it altogether if you do jump off the building you'll die or you'll lose a lot of health now if these bombs explode like i said they will hurt and they will cause a bleed debuff and a slow debuff both of these cannot be cleansed. These debuffs suck, especially if he does this lightning vacuum attack, which I mentioned in normal mode. It's the same thing here, he does the same thing. And if you fail to iframe, you really won't have enough time to get out or just do any iframe to get out because you'll be slowed and you'll probably die. And now the threat level rising. It's the exact same as normal mode. And a special tip to you guys that I don't really think anybody has mentioned or I haven't seen on any guide, I haven't seen on any video, so maybe this will help maybe it will not help when the specific effect up here which you can see reaches 18 seconds you can jump off to safety every single time now you could count to four like i said in my last video just count the explosions wait to three and then jump off or you could just look at the timer and once it reaches 18 seconds just jump off if you jump off at 17 seconds you will die and if you jump off at 19 seconds you will die 18 seconds is the perfect time you can trust it i have tested it numerous times with my group and it works perfectly but you must hit 18 seconds seconds. Now lastly is the energy release system. Now Venturin will create a pizza mechanic which honestly you can just skip altogether by just going to the great save zone but assuming that maybe this will go out and all these red indicators might go away you can just go to the pizza slices that are grayed out. This should kind of remind you of Shadow Sanguinary or Velic Sanctuary. I just recommend going to the safe spot and just staying there and that's literally it for him. For Nightmare Hexapleon. Now it's basically the same thing as well just a little more painful and faster. So to begin with as you you guys know from normal mode basically he will spawn one electric sphere which hurts like a bitch now in hard mode he's going to spawn three and yes yes indeed there is a chance you might get all three one after another so just be prepared for that it's completely random but it's a possibility you want to form a line like so so the group won't be affected and die to the mechanic trust me <laughs> i've killed my team so many many times so you want to have two on one side and one on the other, or just create a line. Now with this line, you want it to have it aim at the boss almost. And if you have one on one side and two on the other side, you want to make sure that that line is connected in a way. Now you don't want to put the spheres too far away from the boss or too close to the boss because then there won't be a really a safe zone. You want to put it just right that you can go to the boss in the safe zones donut thing and then I don't know, live, I guess? So that is just one way. He also still does the shutdown program, which is a little bit different and I'll try to explain. Essentially, if he does a donut mechanic, you want to be in the safe zone, which is underneath him, obviously. And right after that explodes, you want to go to a safe zone, which is in the middle of every ledge. Now, if he does the donut and you're outside, he will pull you in after he explodes. You will have a bleeding debuff, which you can cleanse, luckily. But you will be silenced, so just keep that in mind. You might not be able to use your skills. If you want to know where the safe zones are, it's right here. It's literally in the middle of this thing. So every time you see this design around the map, 
it's always in the middle of it. Now you could just run out, stay out, or go in and do the donut, then run out, or just avoid the red altogether and death. That's all I'm saying. Just avoid the red. You'll figure it out, I'm sure. Now the last mechanic that he does is code verification. So he'll either say one zero one 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 zero or zero one 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 zero one. Now I'm not going to complicate it for you guys at all. I'm gonna say this really simple, and it's the way that works for me, it's the way I taught my team, and it works for them. If the number ends with zero, <laughs> I know, if the number ends with zero, go to the left, and you're going to avoid the cutting things. So you'll just stay still, they'll spawn, you'll move to the left, they'll spawn, you'll move to the left, and they'll spawn again. If it ends with a one, you'll stay still, they'll spawn, you'll go to the right, they'll spawn, you'll go to the right, they'll spawn. And that's it. Now there is an alternative way, and this is between the pillars that drop down. It's the save zones that I just mentioned previously when I was talking about the in-out mechanic or whatever when he does the shutdown phase. You can just go there and wait it out, but you have to be on the sides of the boss. So if the boss is north, you want to be east or west. You cannot be south and you cannot be north. So you want to make sure you're positioned properly. So like I said, you could just go in between these pillars and you'll be completely fine. And just wait till the mechanic is completely done and over with. Or troll your friends. And if you're a priest, then pull him into a mechanic. I'd never do that though. <laughs> <clears throat> and finally, RK9. Now, I've been dreading explaining this because I tend to overcomplicate shit and I'm gonna try to explain this. So, if I confuse you, I'm so sorry. I'm... I know how I am. I know how I am. So before I begin, I'm going to explain S-Bomb because, well, a lot of you really wanted to know what the fuck it was and how to deal with it, even though it's not a mechanic. And you guys know, if you've been following my channel for the last year or so, I do not do anything that is not a mechanic. I'm a super important. And I guess this is, so this is a new thing for me, so I'm going to try to explain it for you guys to avoid it and how he does it and the calls out for it. So, S-Bomb. Now this motherfucker is going to clap his hands like he's about to slap the shit out of you. And he is. He is. Now before 70%, he will clap his hands twice. Understand this. He's going to clap his hand twice if his fist is lifted up and you're a tank, you can iframe to that part and you'll be safe. If you're a DPS, you need to dodge to the other side where his fist is on the ground. If that makes sense, okay. So, I'm gonna recap just once. If he claps his hand twice and his fist is up, you go to the fisty side. If you're a tank only, if you're a tank, don't confuse this. Now, if his fist is on the ground and you're a DPS on the behind, only on the behind. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in the video. You wanna go to that side. Okay, ASMR over. Now if that makes sense, God knows it didn't to me, but after 70% he will clap his hands like he's about to sing applause by Lady Gaga, and he will do double S-bomb. So, you'll need to dodge to one side, the exact same pattern that I just said, and then move to the other side. Really quick. Once it's done. One shot. One pillow. I don't know. Or be like me and run the fuck away. <laughs> I'm so useless. So last recap is the fist is up and you're a tank. You go to that side. If the fist is down and you're a DPS, you go to that side. And if it's after 70%, after you do that, you switch sides. You go to the opposite side that you are on. That's it. Okay. Now, pretty sure I'll still get more comments about how I confuse them even more, but I don't know, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. I'm not the only video out there. Now, here's a video from Essential Mana to help because I honestly don't really know how else to explain it, and I wanted to avoid a comment section filled with how to do S bombs again. Now, with the tracking situation, he'll put a cross thing on you, and in hard mode, you can bait res to have him focus on you. It's almost every 60 seconds or so. So this is important that you do, especially if you're doing extreme mode, because he'll stop any attacks and mechanics that he's doing for a good 5 seconds or so, and it'll give your team time to DPS. Now, if you're a priest, I recommend you having full health and Kaya shield it while you learn how to dodge it. The chances are is that you're going to die a few times to it, but I recommend you Kaya shield right before you bait res so you don't get hit by it. Or you can bait res, wait till it forms on you, just in case, so you don't lose that Kaya shield, and then Kaya shield. I mean, you'll lose a lot of health, but you're not gonna die, so that's just a tip from me to you. That's how I learned it. I just started doing that, and it works pretty well, especially if you're gonna res somebody, and there's not enough time, or protection protocols about to come out, so you just Kaya shield and res them anyways, so you could just cheese the whole mechanic, I guess. It's not even a mechanic, so... I don't know why I've explained it. 
So, at 95% HP, he's going to have something that says Protection Protocol. Let's call it Shield Phase. If you don't break it, you wipe. It's as simple as that. If you cannot break the shield, come back another time, take another swing at it, because your DPS is crap. It's not a thing about you. This dungeon just can be a little bit relentless sometimes. So just know that. Now every 100 seconds or so, he will have a shield phase. It's the same as normal mode, but I thought I'd state it. It's a little bit higher and has a little bit more endurance, so you want to just throw everything you can at it. Now during this phase, you can activate what most people call extreme mode, and it's really not called that, but for the sake of argument, I'm just going to call it that so people don't get confused. A lot of people say RKE or RK9 extreme mode. This is what they mean. I'll explain how extreme mode works right after this. So in normal hard mode, everything is as said above. However, there are a couple new mechanics that I probably should explain. And in extreme mode, there's a, also an added one. So I'll explain that as well. So with the new mechanic, he will call out melee, ranged, or full range, or multi-range. I'm not going to say their full names. I don't think they're really important. I'm just going to tell you what they mean. Melee means out. So stay away about 10 meters or so. Ranged means in. So stay near him. I, I don't really know what to tell you, about 7 meters or so. Multi and full range are the exact same thing and it just means wave. So, melee is out, range is in, multi or full is wave. Now this may f*** with you because it does say multi range or full range and you might think that it means in or something, but if it says multi range or full range it just means wave. Just remember that. So during this fight at around 97%, he'll usually call out his first mechanic. Now let's say it's full range and you just want to remember that it's wave. You can write it down on your party chat and make sure your party's not talking and just put W. That's what I do. You can, if you're feeling brave and bold, you could put wave completely. I don't really know. Now, the reason for this is because the next time that he calls a mechanic, he'll say something else. In this case, he'll say ranged, which means in. So what you'll want to do is do his last mechanic call out first and then a new one. So in this case, it's wave then in. So you'll iframe the wave in and you stay there. Little common misconception is that some people think that when it says wave out or something like that, the wave is coming out. It's always going to be coming out of the boss, no matter what. The wave does not change coming out in or something like that. It just stays from the boss coming out of the boss like, I don't know, like a scream. Think about it. So it's always the last call out first and then the new one. They both happen right after one another if you're thinking about the timing. So if you're doing wave in, you'll want to iframe the wave going inside his inner circle and then just stay there. Rather than iframing too far and then trying to go in, because you'll die. It's one right after another. That is literally it. Now for extreme mode, take everything I just said about the in-out wave system out of your brain. Completely deleted. Well, not all of it, but most of it. So at 95%, you'll get shield phase, which is where we last left off. I recommend a 96% to set up for this. So what you'll want to do is to set up on these pylons, which the whole team needs to get. Now you can kind of think of it as a pentagon shape, where the gate is at the very bottom of the pentagon, and you have the two bottom sides, where I am and the opposite side of me, and then you have the three on the back one directly behind the boss, and two on the sides. Now everyone activates it quickly, and then he'll fall to his knees. Now at this point, he'll have an extra shield phase, which you need to break quickly and destroy, or it's a wipe. Now after you break the 95% shield and there's good DPS, he'll manually enrage so you don't need to enrage the boss at the start. Doing this has activated extreme mode. Now keep in mind that once the shield is broken, a 10 minute timer will start. You need to kill the boss before 10 minutes are up, or it's a wipe. Now he's going to hit much harder and he's going to have more HP. So DPS needs to be on him all of the time and I recommend bait resing as much as possible like I previously mentioned to help your team out if you're a healer. And yes, if you do use a resurrection scroll and you're a DPS, he will target you as well. So in extreme mode, everything is the exact same that I mentioned before. It's literally all the same. The only difference is the protocol, which I will explain. So at 97% HP, he's going to say whatever he wants to say. So let's say wave. I recommend you typing this out like I mentioned before. When you're safe in a safe zone and he's not going to target you or he's in the middle of a mechanic, you write W or whatever he's doing. And usually this is the job of the healer. They want to do this. So you'll need to do this because it'll help out your team with what I'm about to say. Don't be overwhelmed. So he will say system parameter adjustment zero or one. If it's zero, he's red. If it's one, he's green. Now you can also look directly underneath him. It's going to have a triangle and it's going to be green or red. This will help you immensely 
when figuring out what's going on and too much is going on and you're resing people and you're trying to figure out what his color is, you can just look directly underneath him. It does change throughout the fight, so you can't just keep it in your mind. So if he's red, you want to do what he calls out that's new first and then the old mechanic second. So let's say he originally said full range or multi range, which obviously means wave and he's red and now his new mechanic is in. So what you want to do is in and then wave. Now you want to remember in for the next mechanic, not wave. If he's green, it's just like normal hard mode. You'll want to do the previous mechanic first, then the new one. So if it's wave, then in, like in my previous example, and he's green, you'll do wave, then in, and still remember in. Now the difference in this system is that the red reverses the order, but you still need to remember the newest one for the next time he calls it out. So if it's in, which is the new mechanic that he just called out, that is what you want to write down and let your team know. So to recap, if he's green, you do the old mechanic first, then the new one. If he's red, you do the new mechanic first, then the old one. I'm going to tell you guys a tip that works for me and has worked for my team. If he is wave, for example, and he's red, like I said, he's wave, you type it out, I say something wave, something wave, something wave, something wave in my head. So you know to expect that the next thing that he says is the first thing you're going to do and then wave. If he's green, I have it in my head saying wave something, wave something, wave something, just repeating in my head. That way I prepare myself to do a wave and whatever he says. So I hope that helps. Maybe that helps. Maybe that doesn't. I don't know. It drives me insane in my head. So many loud voices. So that's it. The rest is pretty much the exact same as normal hard mode. If that even makes sense. I don't know. If there are any questions about RK9 hard mode or the last boss, please ask in the comments below and I'll try my best to explain. Make sure to subscribe and click that adorable f***ing bell to know when I upload a brand new video. Much love and as always. Till next time, friends.